All right, in this video, we're going to show you how to simulate a mobile robot using Gazebo and ROS2 control. Specifically, we're going to be using the Cybertruck, and we're having our Tesla bot ride the Cybertruck because the Tesla bot can't walk yet, so it's going to be riding along, telling it what to do. So if you haven't seen my Tesla bot simulation, go ahead and check out this video right here. But in this video, we'll be covering these topics here. So we'll be talking about how to do the gazebo and ROS2 control installation, the package structure, the CMake file changes, the corner frames, the URDF file, the gazebo and ROS2 control launch file, the gazebo and ROS2 control setup for the URDF file, the YAML file for the diff drive controller, and the command publisher to send the commands to wheel robot, and finally go over some visualization of the data with plot juggler. So to get Gazebo and ROS2 control set up, make sure you go ahead and run these commands to install everything that you need. So here is a package structure for our Gazebo simulation. So if you haven't made your package already, go ahead and run this command here to make your package. But the structure of our folders is right here, as you can see below. So we're going to have a new folder called config. And inside of here, we're going to have our YAML file. We're going to have a new folder for our launch file and then make our own launch file here. We're going to have a new folder for our meshes to contain our STL files. We're going to have a new file called the diff drive publisher.cpp. And we're going to have a URDF folder that contains our Zacro file, make some changes to our CMake list, and then just leave our package.xml alone. OK, now let's take a look at the things we need to modify in our CMake list.txt. So up here, we have our find packages. We have one for our ment CMake, our geometry messages, and our RCLCPP. And next up, we want to include our directories. We have our launch, URDF, config, and meshes. And we want to add our executable here. So we have one for our diff drive publisher, which will be sending our commands. And then we have our target dependencies set up here to use these two things. And finally, we have our install targets, which we're including our diff drive publisher and have our destination here. Next up, let's take a look at our coordinate frames for our wheeled mobile robot. So here we have four wheels. You have the first one, the second one, the third one, and the fourth one. So these four wheels, we have our coordinate frames. I'm drawing it x, z, the y axis you could figure out by the right hand rule. But all of these we have shifted here. So you can see these dots here is the actual location. I'm just drawing the frames on the outside for better visibility. And you can see our Tesla bot here is right at the center of our Cybertruck. And we have some key dimensions here, our 1.146, which is the separation of our wheels. And then this value here, 0.4175, is the radius of our wheel. So if we scroll down a little bit more, you can see this is the top view of our, or the side view of our uh, robot and our Tesla bot, the truck and the Tesla bot. So you can see some of the key dimensions here that we care about is this dimension here, the 1.5. So this is the distance between the center and the wheel in the x direction here. And then we have another one, a very small distance here, which is the um, z the Z shift of the wheel relative to the center. And then we have another dimension here that's going to be the distance from the robot to the base of the, the body of the car. So these will be some key dimensions that we'll be using later on in our URDF file. OK, so now let's take a look at our URDF file for our wheeled mobile robots. So here are the lists of links that we're going to be going over. We have the body, window, the front left wheel, front right, back left, and back right. One thing to make note is that you need to make sure you have your collision tag. Otherwise, the wheel is just going to sink through the ground, and your robot's going to disappear. And here are the lists of joints that we're having. So everything is going to be connected to the body. So we have to make that joint connection to allow it to um, rotate later on. And one thing to note is that the direction of the axis needs to be flipped. Because previously, when we were looking at our wheels, we have one wheel. We have the z-axis pointing outwards. So because they're pointing outwards, we want it to rotate in the same direction. So you have to flip the direction for the axis. So if you want to more have a more in-depth review of the URDF file, I have a video right here. So you can go ahead and check it out. But let's go ahead and take a deeper dive in our Cybertruck urdf.zacro file here. So here is the URDF file, as you can see here. So we're going to take a look at that. Up here on top, what you can see here is we have our body. 
And for the inertia, um, the inertial tags, I'm not really caring about that right now. You could fill it out to be more accurate later on. But the key part right here is we're adding a mesh for our body. So we have a body.stl file here. And then we're going to just leave the scale to be one to one because I've already set up the scale correctly. And if we scroll down a little bit, you see we have our window. So the window is just something I created so that you can see the windows in different colors. And again, it has its own window.stl file. And then next up, we have the front wheel. So for our front left wheel, what we have is um, we just have some filler here for the inertial, the inertial tag. Um, but, but the main important part is going to be the collision. I made the collision tag to be very similar to the actual uh, size of the wheel. And then again, I have a wheel STL file. This wheel STL file will be the same for all of the wheels. So I'm going to repeat the same thing for the front right. And we have the back left. Again, it's repeated. And then um, you have our back left here, back right. So all of these will be pretty much the same. The main thing that's going to be changing is going to be the actual joints. So if we take a look at the joints, the different things that we're actually modifying here is uh, these values here. So if we take a look at this, you can see the key part is going to be the origin. So if you notice here, uh, some of these values will be different. So you can see that this one is going to be positive and this one is negative here. Because if you look at our coordinate system previously in the y, one is in the positive, this one is in the positive y, this one is in the negative y. And then here we have the same thing. Um, now we're shifting it to the back. So here we have negative x with positive y, and then we have negative x with um, negative y. So these are the combinations to put the wheels in the right direction. And then we have some rotation here. We have a negative pi half, a positive pi half, negative pi half, and positive pi halves. So these will allow the direction of the axis to be pointing with the z-axis outwards like we saw in the corner frames earlier. And then finally, we have our continuous tag. So this will just allow it to be rotating. Um, so that's one of the key parts. And finally, we have our axis here. So notice that we have in the positive z and then negative z, positive z, and negative z. So this will allow the directions to be in the right uh, direction as we talked about earlier. And then finally, each one we have a parent and child, so that's going to tie the body to the correct wheel. Okay, now let's, let's take a look at our launch file that we need. So the main things that we have, we have a gazebo launch, a robot state publisher node, a robot spawn node, a joint state publisher node, a load joint state broadcaster, a load joint trajectory controller, and finally a run plot juggler. Okay, so here you can see that these are all the imports that we need to have everything up and running. And the first thing that we have here is you can see we have our uh, gazebo launch. So this will start up our gazebo.launch.py file. So this is the core thing that we're calling, and we're calling it from our package here called gazebo ROS. And this will start up our gazebo. And you can play around with uh, world files here if you want to. And then right here, we have our robot description. So this will read in our cybertruck.urdf.zacro file. And then it's going to use the zacro command here and pretty much extract everything and convert it to a urdf file. And then we have our robot state publisher here. So this will get some of the joint information that we'll need for our simulation. And we scroll down a little bit more. We have some things for the RVIS. So you can see right here, we have our joint state publisher node. So this will be the things that will show the things in Arvis when we actually try to render it. And then we have a robot spawn node. So this will actually um, get some of our robot description information. We have a load joint state broadcaster. So this is some of the things for ROS to control to make some of the commands available. And then finally, we have these last two things. So here we have our load diff drive base controller. And this will get some of our commands for moving the wheels. And we have our run uh, plot juggler, so this will help visualize some of the things. So tying it all together, we have our launch description here. So we're going to just call all the things that we've created up on top and then return it as a launch description. So now if we run this ROS2 launch wheeled robot gazebo.launch.py file, we're going to see the rendering of our robot show up here. So you can see that this is our Cybertruck here, all nicely rendered. You can see we have the robot up on top of the car as we expected. And you can see that it's a nice uh, color that we've set. And we'll go over some of that later on. But 
right now, everything is not moving yet. We could just see the simulation of it. But after we start sending the commands to everything, you could see the wheels moving. And you can see the nice texture on the wheels. Um, it's black right now, so you can't see all the details. But you could play around with the lighting and the colors if you want to see more details uh, later on. But you can see it's a pretty nice rendering here in Gazebo. OK, so now let's talk about some of the tags I need to add in our Zacro file so that we could actually use the ROS2 control to move the robot. So here we have the ROS2 control uh, tag here. And what we want to have is a Gazebo system and type is system. So in here, we're going to use our hardware. So we have our Gazebo ROS2 control Gazebo system. And then we want to set up the joints that we're actually going to be using to be moving. So this is going to be a rear, rear wheel drive uh, Cybertruck. So we're going to have one joint name here. We have the body, body to back left wheel. We're going to be commanding it in velocity. And we're going to be using our state interface to be monitoring the position and velocity. And then similarly, we're going to be doing this for the right wheel. And if we scroll down, uh, we're going to see that we have our uh, gazebo tags here. So these are some of the things I need to pay attention to. So here we have our gazebo tag here. So this will use our gazebo plugin. It's going to be called libgazebo-ros2-control.so. And the name is going to be called gazebo ros 2 control And here we're getting the parameters from our uh, diff drive controller.yaml file, which we'll be going over later on. And this is going to be located in our config file. And then here we have our gazebo references. So some things to note is that once you set this up, you can set the colors. And then for each of the wheels, you get to set um, also the colors of the wheels, but also two main things you want to make note of is that we're actually setting the mu values to be 0. So we want the front wheels to be uh, just passively rotating since they're not being driven. So these would be the key things you want to add to make sure that it's not interfering. So make sure you have those friction parameters set. And we have our mu1 and mu2. So Mu1 is the main direction, and Mu2 is a perpendicular direction. Okay, So that's what the Mu1 and 2s are for. And if you scroll down a little bit more, you see that we have uh, the same thing for the back and the back left and right wheel, except those are driven. So we're just not going to set a Mu value for that. And then some of the Tesla bot things um, I went over previously, so I won't be going over that. Go ahead and check out that video if you want to see more detail. OK, now let's take a look at our diff drive controller uh, YAML file here. So this YAML file will allow us to set some of our configurations for our robot control. So the main things we want to make note of is we want to set our left wheel names, right wheel names, the wheel separation, the wheel radius, and the base frame ID. So right now, we're only using uh, two wheels. But if you want to use uh, four wheels, you can set it as a list here. So you can see here, we only have a list of one for each. And some things to make note of is that you want to set right here the joint state broadcaster. And then we have our diff drive base controller here. So these are the controllers that we're going to be using. And then we have our wheel separation here. Our wheel per side is going to be 1 here. And we have our wheel radius to be 0.4175, which we know from our STL file. And we scroll down a little bit more. Some of the key things to note is that we have our ODOM uh, frame ID is called ODOM. And our base frame ID is called body. OK, now let's take a look at our diff drive commands publisher for our wheel mobile robot. So we will be controlling our mobile robot with the twist stand message through the diff drive base controller command velocity topic with our own diff drive publisher. So we have a series of different message types that we'll be utilizing. So let's take a look at that. So you can see here we have a twist stamped message. So here we have a twist that's going to be a type twist. And then from there, we're going to be using from the twist message. So inside the twist message, we have a vector 3 for both linear and angular. And then what a vector 3 is, it's going to be defined in the vector 3 dot message, which is going to be float 64 of xyz. So essentially, you're going to have um, xyz for the linear and xyz for the angular. But one thing to note is that because our robot is in a plane, what you're only going to have is going to be a linear x and then the angular z to control the left and right. Because in practice, a car, if you imagine you have a car here, you can only go forward, and then you could turn um, turn right or turn left. And that's going to be controlled by the angular z. So really, even though a twist, uh, twist stamp has uh, six values, we're going to be using two of the six. So now let's take a look at our diff drive publisher file. So here we have our 
file that's going to be sending our command. So here we have some, some of our includes, and we've created our class here called diff drive publisher. And inside of here, we're going to make our node. And then once we make our node, we're going to create our publisher here. And then we have our uh, topic here set up with our certain frequency. And then we have our callback here um, using our timer, create wall timer. And then finally, we have our private here called publish command. So this publish command here is the main thing that we're going to be using. We're going to be sending a linear.x at point 0.1 and an angular.z at point 0.1 as well. So this will allow it to the robot to start rotating while going straight. And then finally, we have some other private variables that we've declared here. And then we're going to call our uh, typical init spin shutdown and then get everything up and running. Okay, so in one terminal, we had our gazebo launch file running. And then in our other terminal, we're going to run our diff drive publisher here. So this will actually make our robot start moving. And if you can see here, if I open this, you can see our robot is rotating as we expect. So if you zoom into wheels, you can see the wheels are turning. And this one's turning forward. And the other one is also turning forward. But you can see this one is turning a little bit slower as expected since uh, we're actually having it rotate, so you would expect one wheel to be turning faster than the other wheel. So from the top view, you can see that it's starting to uh, curve, making an arc. And this is exactly what we expect the motion to be. And you could play around with the different speeds to see if it could go faster. You could also make it negative to go uh, reverse. You could change the direction of the angular z to make it turn left or right based on whatever you want. So you could play with that and see what suits your needs. But you can see right now that everything is up and running. Um, you can also try adjusting the mu variable, and then you'll see that the front wheels will have issues because of the friction. Uh, but you can see right now it's just not rotating, it's just sliding, but that's OK. Uh, visually, uh, you can see that because it's still performing like we want it to, then it's pretty good. Now, you may be interested in visualizing the data and plot juggler. So I have a video that I um, posted recently here. So you can go ahead and check it out for some of the details. But what we're going to do is just show you how to visualize some of the data that we've already set up. So if you go to the layouts, I've already saved the layout. And again, I went over this in that video. But once you upload the layouts, you get to see that um, we have some of our topics that we've chosen here, the ODOM and the joint states. I'm going to hit OK. And you can see that our plots will be showing. So. Here you can see these are our wheel velocities. You can see that um, the green is the, the called body to back left, and the orange is the body to back right. And you can see that there's a difference in terms of the magnitude. So the orange one is higher, and the, the green one is lower, which is as we expect. So that just means that one wheel is turning faster than the other. And this right here is an XY plot that I've also generated. So this is showing you the trajectory of the mobile robot, in this case our Cybertruck, as it's moving along in a circle. So this might be useful if you want to do some analysis on the trajectory. Okay, so if you found this video helpful, give a like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.